What's up, YouTube? It's your friendly neighborhood GM, your host, Coach Key. And welcome to Legends of Dice Cafe, where we learn about tabletop RPGs from old school to modern and do lots and lots of solo gameplay and GM tips from a new GM. New-ish. <laughs> Back with my weekly video like I do on Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I drop a video every single week. And today's video is the Patreon's choice. Every other week, they get an opportunity to vote on the video that I do for the week. And for this week's video, they voted that I provide you guys with, so far, my favorite solo RPG games that I play in my downtime. Get it? Downtime. As always, if you enjoy the content, make sure you hit that like button. It helps YouTube think that I'm super freaking cool and awesome. And if you're looking for another way to support or further support the channel, hop on over to Patreon and subscribe. It is free to join. <sighs> yeah, so, with the, and this is just a little bit. So, without further ado, let's jump into it. So I can share with you my favorite so far. Remember, I'm still uh, fairly new <laughs> to playing solo, or to actually playing games that are geared towards specifically solo play. So if you have any suggestions, of course, please drop them in the comments so I can create a list of new ones to try out. Without further ado, let's get it. Honestly, playing and learning, um, it's been a really, really cool journey. It's gotten me off of the devices, which has been super cool. Um, I've been reading a lot more, doing more math. It's amazing that I could share it, have the opportunity to share it, have the ability and the means to share it. And I have, you know, and there are people out there who care to listen. So I appreciate it. So check this out. This one right here. This one was the very first game that I played that was geared towards just solo play instead of me adapting another game, another system to make it a solo, to play it solo. Fabled Lands. Now, this has multiple books. This is a pretty cool book, and it's a really great introduction to, say, for instance, you're new to solo playing, but even if you just want something easy to, <laughs> something fast to play on the go, you know, if you're traveling, it has everything that you need, the character creation and the adventure you're going to make choices if you're just in case you're not familiar with it. You create your character and then you start making different choices and those choices will lead you to different numbers and that's how you get around. It's a series of interactive books. So you can be different things. You can be an explorer, a merchant, a priest, a scholar, uh, different things. You can buy goods and houses, townhouses. You can join a temple. Um, it's, it's a pretty cool adventure. And here's a map of Fable Lands right here, which is super cool. I like this. And this book begins in this town right here. And it's a fun journey. Uh, I've died a few times. I've actually played this solo on the channel. So make sure you go and check that out. So you're on a journey to defeat a rat king. Uh, to retrieve a golden net of the gods from the repulsive ones deep beneath the sea. And use the rewards of your victories to travel beyond the boundaries of the known world. The character creation is also super easy. Check that out. Quick rules. Super simple. Super easy. Next up, we have... Loner. Another solo RPG. This is super cool. It is very cool to use as far as inspiration goes for creating stories. It's got some cool tables inside of it. It allows you to have amazing adventures in any genre and any setting with two pairs of dice, D6. Choosing your genre, you make your protagonist, how to start your game. Look at these cool tables. Who doesn't like tables? Okay, tones, settings things let's just roll on it real quick to see what we get this is my carry around the house bag i use it to play inside of the office <laughs> and i carry it uh into like the living room after everybody has settled down for the night just in case i want to play hang out in there so i guess this is my travel bag <laughs> Let's see. 
Let's see, we got a 1 and a 2. So, 1 and a 2 ancient runes. Let's try one more. That sounds actually pretty cool. A 5 and a 2. Let's see. So, we got a 2 and a 5 ancient runes. Forbidden love. That sounds like a pretty interesting journey. So, I'm going to write that down real quick. How to resolve conflict during the game. More super cool tables, verbs, nouns, adjectives. <laughs> I mean, and this thing was like $6 on Amazon. I think this is a really great, gr really great quick buy. Table for actions. This has helped me in many different ways. And I typically use other systems when I play this game. Kernathelis. I think that's how you say it. I'm not exactly sure. This is a really, really, really cool game and a really fun game. So what it is in the beginning and the start of the journey up top, above world you commit some sort of crime you can roll for the kind of crime so you survive an execution and end up in the in the underworld at first when i first purchased the book it took me a while to actually pick it up because it felt like it was a lot of rules just a lot going on and stuff but as i take the time out to actually play i realized it is not that bad at all and it is a very cool game. It's a really cool system as well. And it's a D100 system. So you start off with your light source and then you roll on the type of dungeon or the type of room or corridor that you actually come upon. Jot that down and then you're going to roll for different things inside of it. So you, there's something called like a tension die. And again, I'm still learning. So definitely correct me if you start off with a D8 and as you get into, as you roam different areas, you're going to roll that tension die and anything I think is a one to two, that's when you drop down to the next die to the smaller die to your D6 and then you roll that, you get a one or two and then you go down to here and then you actually, once you hit a one or two on that one, and again, it's called a tension die check. Once you determine whether it is a regular room or a corridor or the domain's exit, you make a tension die check and that's when you go through those stages of those different dies and once you hit one to two, if I'm not mistaken, then you go down to the next one, and then when you get all the way to, boom, here it is. Then you roll on this cool table right here. So boom, after you get you, so you have your light source, make sure you write that down. And I think one is good for like 20 different rooms. So you make sure you check it off. If this is the first room or the corridor of a new domain, that's when you have to determine who the overseer is. And you do like a layer check. Every time you place a new room, you must do a layer check in order to find where the domain's overseer is. And that's when you start with that usage die or that tension die. So you start you start to die with being at a D12. Once you reach the last stage, you roll a 1 or 2 on the D4. Uh, it means you found the domains overseer. So this is a lot easier and the player eggs help out a great deal. And combat is also not very difficult in this as well, which I expected differently. So, you know, so I'm glad I gave it a shot and I'm looking forward to playing this solo on the channel very, 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 very soon. So this is definitely a great game to add to and it teaches you, shows you how to do it co-op as well. So definitely a great game. And you have everything you need, of course, inside of here. And you have a lot of different options as far as creating a character as well. I would say my next up would be Dragon Bane. Okay, the box set came with solo rules and they are lots of fun, okay? And it's called Alone in Deep Fall Breach. And it is such a really fun adventure and it comes with lots of different tables for you to roll on just like we did in that last game. All right, so they're called waypoints. So waypoints, you've got a bunch of different areas. Let's start right here. You've got one through five right? So a few of them are already known. and It'll tell you exactly what you come upon there. So, and then there are also other areas where it says unknown. When it says unknown, that's when you take the time out to roll so you can see what you're going to find in that cool, awesome area. Super cool. I like Dragon Bane. Rules are easy and it does come with an adventure book as well. And these can be quite these can absolutely be used for solo adventures or for a solo campaign using Dragon Bane. I like Dragon Bane a lot, okay? <laughs> I have a review on the Dragon Bane box set, and I've also been running this solo. I have a series that I started, so check it out when you get a chance. This one right here, Four Against Darkness, has been one of my favorite go-to games as of lately. It is such a really cool, it comes with so many expansions. Check this out. 
this is such a cool game that I have invested in purchasing more of the supplements <laughs> and the expansions because this is such a cool game. And it has so many different options so you can take your characters that you've created in this specific game right here using the system. You can take it into different adventures like Echoes of the Dead, which is super, super cool. You start off with, again, four characters and you just send them down into this dungeon area. And this is the core book. You roll for your quarter to see what I'm sorry, you roll for your entrance. Next up, you roll to see, you roll a d66, so you roll two d6s, and then one's going to be the tens, and one is going to be the uh, ones, and then you're just going to roll next. This is such a cool game. You're going to roll next on the room contents, and go from there, and it's got a few different tables, tables for your bosses, your minions, and it's a reasonably priced, but I guarantee you, if you grab this, you're going to probably end up purchasing more of books to go with it, because again, it has a lot of options. I really like Four Against Darkness, and let me tell you, one of the things uh, that I purchased recently for Four Against Darkness is Treacheries of the Troublesome Tome. One and two. You get a chance to take your four against darkness characters and out of the dungeons and into and actually exploring a town or a hamlet, a uh, city, uh, creating an underground world. This is so cool. And this has been really inspirational to got me into actually taking a time out to um, stop procrastinating and, and just build my world. I have a small foundation. And I know the best way to start is to start. <laughs> you know, you don't have to know everything or what to do here or there. The whole point is to just start somewhere. Start somewhere and keep going from there and learning and growing. So the other day I took some dice today and I just dropped them into onto my sketchbook. Created this really cool rough sketch, rough sketch and boom, created my first little area. This is going to be the town or the land that uh, I am currently venturing in in my Karen solo series. So I think I'm going to make it put it in the south because I think I said it was in the south. So I'm going to put it down here in the cute little town that Karen characters are currently venturing into. Yeah, So I'm still learning, but to me, it's coming out pretty cool and I can always change it. But at least I'm starting somewhere, you know, so I have. And I also was thinking while I was sitting down, relaxing. Before I came to do this video, I was thinking that maybe some of the people, because I have different types of uh, different land or different kingdoms, I definitely was thinking maybe I'll do uh, maybe a few on land and then maybe one above in sp space and then another one in the underwater, which would be super cool. But yeah, stay tuned. Thanks for letting me show you guys my things too. First one is the rules, and this one has the majority of your tables. And you kind of create on this grid. Look, they even have some sample towns in the back of the book. This is such a cool series. So you just kind of roll on the table. I think this is a, yep, it's a D66 as well. And you just roll on it, and then you kind of just draw it up, which is super cool. And again, I'm still learning how this is my first one right here. So I think I can figure out how to do the water a little better. This wasn't in there, but of course, you know, let you know, be creative and stuff like that. So, you know, I wanted some green area. So, and of course I labeled each section because you're going to visit each section and inside the section, just like right here, you see the letters, they mean specific things. You're going to come upon pickpocketers. Uh, you're going to come upon uh, just different type of encounters. And that's not including going inside of the actual buildings as well. So all these little pink colorful ones and the red are the buildings that you can visit. And you start in one block and you just explore. And then it has little map icons to, where you can uh, use to go under, to go into the underworld and create a map and explore down there, which is, I think this is such super, this is really, really cool. And it has, you can start off with using the basic rules, which is what I've done. I've just started creating a little bit of a map. Now I'm going to take my adventures uh, through it. I was going to create a new set because I'm currently using a set to explore and adventure. You can go on different quests. You can do banking in here. You can find love, get married, 
rules for pregnancy, taxes, factions, and like I said, it has so many different expansions and supplements. I have this, it has more classes. So you only, you're, you only have classes so you can be like a halfling or a cleric. <laughs> so I think it has a warrior and has a few different classes in here. And as I stumbled upon this one, I also found these as well. Four against Mars, alone against fear. And four against the great old ones, you are investigators. So the four against darkness, it has been definitely using up my time when I had the time to play, as well as these cool books that I have recently received and have been enjoying them tremendously. As always, thank you so much for taking the time out to watch the video and support the channel in the many different ways that you support the channel. Thank you so much. If you have any ideas of any videos that you would like to see me do on this channel, drop them in a comment. If you've got any ideas of really great solo games, I like sci-fi, um, I like fantasy, I like horror, I like a mixture of different types. So I'm open, I'm open to trying things because you never really know what you like until so you give it a try in most things. <laughs> As always, don't forget to make sure you hit that like button, make sure you comment and subscribe. Don't forget to turn on your notifications so you don't miss out on any of the cool content that I drop every single week. So you can stay up on the videos. I really do hope that you guys have a fantastic rest of your Friday evening. By the time this video drops, I will be on to my session eight of Dragon Heist. So I see you guys back here, same time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a fantastic Friday. Have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you guys 